Do you know what to do in a disaster? How about in a pandemic? We had to learn fast, didn't we? For sure. So now more than ever, it seems like a good idea to be prepared for anything. We're talking about more than just buying a lot of toilet paper. FEMA says that everyone should be prepared to spend three days on their own. I was thinking about that. I don't even know if I have enough food for three days. Oh. Um, so that is just in case a disaster strikes. So should you uh, and would you know what to do? Maria is live in Tempe with more. Good morning. Can you imagine Jamie with her backpack full of toilet paper? I, you know what? I <laughs> okay. carry it enough so with me for three days every day. You guys see me come in here. <laughs> ready. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Listen, it is 2020. If 2020 taught us anything, anything can happen. And hopefully you won't have to use these skills to survive. But we are here at C2 Tactical in Tempe. If you know where Ikea is, you can find C2 Tactical. We've got Heather behind me. She is the instructor here. And she actually runs a class that teaches you what to pack in case you have a disaster and just really how to survive. So thanks so much for joining us this morning. You have a bag full of gear. Let's go through it. What are the basics if people are at home wondering what they need to make sure they have in their backpack if something were to happen? So in the event that something does happen, there's a couple of things that you definitely want to have. And obviously you want something where you can actually make a fire. You need cordage just in case you need to tie something off or create a shelter. You need to have a cutting tool, uh, some kind of cover to be able to make sure that you can stay cool or warm. Uh, some kind of care kit, which ultimately would end up being a first aid kit and or a trauma kit. And obviously some way that you can obtain water and or can even carry in this bag here. I have a couple packages of emergency rationed water as well. And I always carry a full water bottle with me. That's a total Arizona thing, right? You always have water regardless if it's the summer or the winter. You got to stay hydrated. So, for example, a situation, a lot of people going up north for the holiday, and enjoying the cooler weather, maybe a little bit of snow, depending. We know that Snow Bowl is open this weekend. For example, if you get stuck on the side of the road, you told me that I need to learn how to tie a knot. I did. What knot are you gonna teach me how to tie? Uh, we're gonna learn how to tie a clove hitch today because a clove hitch happens to be the most universal knot to be able to do multiple different things. Uh, for example, creating uh, shelter to be able to keep you warm using a, a tarp or something along those lines. So, you can, so say you I'm can on the side of the road and I need some shade and my car is not doing it for me. You just take yep. the take the rope. Let's make let's make the knot. Yep. And so then you're somehow able. You're going to take this. a loop and loop it twice, and you're just going to tie it exactly the same way every single time. And for the viewers to be able to see easily, I'll just slip it over this right here and what you want to end up with is an X and ultimately in the case that you're using a uh, shelter like this you would actually just slip it over a rock and if you're trying to reflect the sun away from you you would put the reflection up towards the sun and you could place a rock right here in the corner and slip that knot over and tie it off at a 45 degree angle and if you wanted to keep warm in you would flip it the reverse side and have the reflection pointing down at you in order to keep you warm. Okay. Also, if you happen to break down on the side of the road, you can obviously wrap yourself inside this emergency blanket. Oh, yeah, that sounds like I always get cold. I'm going to do that. Exactly. So stay warm. Listen, guys, when you're out in the middle of the wilderness, maybe a 14 mile dirt road with your husband and two Shih Tzus and you don't have cell phone surface, it might be good Gosh. to have these skills because you can't YouTube it in the middle of a 14 mile oh. dirt road. Not saying from experience. <laughs> this or was anything. last week, right? When um, you did Bustle yeah, Creek? <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere where there's not cell service. I mean, I like nature, but can we get cell service out there, Fossil oh. Creek? From wildfires to coronavirus, many people have been thinking about getting ready for any disaster that might pop up. So what do you do? What do you pack? What do you have to keep on hand? Maria decided to find out this morning, and you can too with a special class. She has all the details. We're at C2 Tactical in Tempe. If you know where Ikea is, you can find this place. Did you know they have a disaster preparedness class? And if 2020 has taught us anything between protests and violence and, you know, we don't really want to talk about it, but are you prepared in case of a disaster? What if you get tied up with some duct tape? We've got Heather here. She's one of the instructors for this class. I did not do this. <laughs> I did not tie you up with duct tape, but yeah, you did. can you give us a quick tutorial? of how you can get out of something like this. Absolutely, so if you get tied up in duct tape, it's actually pretty simple to get out. All you're gonna do is raise your arms above your head, spread your elbows, and slam through your chest. 
and it is literally that simple. Pretty amazing, even though nobody really wants to actually have to know how to get out of deck tape. No, probably not, but it's definitely a good skill to have. Another good skill, starting a fire, you told me. Uh, a lot of people going up north, maybe they're going to go camping, uh, get some get some rest and relaxation out of cell phone range. Yeah. Uh, what do they need to start a fire if they don't have wood around? If you don't have wood around, all you need is some kind of cotton material that you can make very, very fibrous. And all you've got to do is break it up and get those fibers exposed. So kind of like if you have a t-shirt, would that work? Um, a t-shirt would be a little bit more complicated to be able to get it started. Um, but any kind of like dryer lint, cotton, Q-tips, uh, tampons, all great, great items to be able to, to start a fire. And then all you really need is a spark, right, after, after that part. So um, this is a ferro rod. Uh, the great part about this is, is that um, it lasts forever. Obviously, a, a Bic lighter is a great option, too, for anybody who doesn't know how to use one of these. And all you need to do is just give it a little... Strike. And there you go. You've and got a fire go. start. Say you're in the middle of a dirt road and you need some help, right? SOS. What You told me something else that you can have the burn that would uh, get someone's attention. Yeah. So if uh, you need to signal somebody, you can start a fire. And then if you're in a regular climate during the day without any snow, you can use green vegetation to create white smoke or uh, any kind of rubber or man-made item to create black smoke if for, you're in a snow climate. So for example, the rubber on your cell phone cover, right? Yeah, so particularly on my cell phone cover, I picked a very specific uh, rubber backing. I don't have it on me right now. Would mine work? You have to tell yeah. my bosses though, you can't burn that because I won't work. I won't. you're going to have to pay for that. So <laughs> I won't burn it. I won't burn it. But ultimately, yeah, this would work exactly. It's, it's man-made. It's got a lot of rubber in it. And if you toss that in the fire, it would create black smoke, which would be a contrast against the snow behind you. Got it. So we have a bucket of water. We do have this really ginormous fire extinguisher. So we are making sure that we are staying safe out here. But again, we just went through the things that you need to pack into your survival kit. Let me tell you. This is a lot of information. We can't just pack this in three minutes. So again, they are having classes at C2 Tactical, survival classes, d disaster classes that start December 4th. You just reach out to them for more information. Ladies, back to you.